Uncle Madhouse Radio, your home to everything biker, biker news and discussions of the day, and now, the Motorcycle Madhouse Mayhem Evening Show with James Hollywood Machikari, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, only on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. Bookmark Motorcycle Madhouse Radio on your favorite mobile app now. Rock on! What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. Good morning. It's Wake and Bake Time with Hollywood. <laughs> oh, boy. I had some bio Jesus the other day. Today, oh, my goodness gracious, I got some Girl Scout cookies uh, loading up back there. <laughs> Having a good old time this morning, baby. Uh, how did you guys like the uh, debut show of Hollywood and China? Now, the evening show, uh, we put it on uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, just to give you guys a little taste of what's going to be happening over on Spotify and iTunes. That show is at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, and it's only available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the major podcasts and platforms. I suggest downloading the Spotify app on your phone and listening in, uh, to us over there. It's free. All that good jive, man. But it was uh, fun uh, having her on the show and appreciate everybody's feedback on it. We're going to keep her. We're going to keep her. I was trying her out, seeing how she did. And she hung with old Hollywood, which is badass. Badass, baby. Also, we got a huge announcement long rider he is a uh, subscriber to the show for the next 12 weeks he is going to be sponsoring rock on merchandise for the subscriber who does the most miles in a week now how it's going to work i'm going to give in the description box long riders email address and what you're going to have to do is mail in or email some of your receipts to show how many miles you did. And whoever gets the most miles, I'll announce on the radio. And you're going to get some rock on merchandise, man, from Insane Throttle Store. Also, it's awesome to get some things going here where I know we always do a lot of bad stuff. So I want to spike it up, and it was Long Rider's ideal, and I really appreciate him getting involved in the show. And this is going to be a pretty cool contest, because after all, man, we're bikers. We need to ride. So let's challenge each other on how many miles we can put in in a week. And each week again, he's going to choose a winner. But it ain't going to be one of those deals, oh, okay, you know, I put 500 in. Okay, you better have some proof there, baby. We're not just going to, you know, take your word at it. No, I'm just kidding. So that email address is going to be in the bottom of the description box. And let's get some miles on, baby, and then we'll get you some uh, Rock On merchandise out there as well. Also, 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 sad state of affairs here in Chicago, man. Uh, the COVID-19, they uh, kind of nabbed a motorcycle club, shut them down, you know, it had to be a freaking rat or something. Had to be a rat that informed the authorities. And next thing you know, the clubhouse is shut down. But I want to swing back a little bit. Talking about riding. Yes, let's do a monologue about riding, man. We got a story coming up where a guy actually would wants to do a 10,000 mile ride. Ooh, somebody butt gonna be burning, baby. Gonna be burning. 10,000 miles. I can't wait to get to that story. Uh, I know Dominic out there, man. He does, uh, he belongs to a long riding association club. And he puts the miles on, you know, he competes on his Harley Davidson while the other ones are on gold wings and, you know, the other uh, manufacturer bikes, which is cool, which is cool. Everybody knows I love a good motorcycle. Two wheels, you're good with me. Good with me. It's not all about Harley Davidson, even though I do get the Harley cheerleaders. Rah, rah, rah. 
that bang on me. But hey, you know what? I, I'm a big boy. I can take that stuff. I can take it. <laughs> but what is your fantasy ride? Your fantasy ride. And I don't want to hear, oh, I want to drive from the United I want to ride from the United States down to the tip of South America. Yeah, I'd like to do that too. But there's a lot of countries in between that don't like us gringos. They don't like Americanas. So that one's gonna be put on the back burner. Now I heard there's some like really decent rides if you want to get your ass cold. You, you know, you ride from the United States through Canada on that highway into Alaska. I heard that is a gorgeous ride. Uh, my personal ride is I want to ride the Black Hills. A lot of you guys have done that out there. A lot of you because you go to Sturges. Me, I don't want to go to Sturges. I just want to go to the Black Hills for the ride. So that has to be one that is on my bucket list. You know, I've done them all over the surrounding states, Illinois, down to Daytona. And, yeah, you know, once you get into the southern region, it's really nice down there. Uh, I love hills, mountains, the whole nine yards. I love the Appalachia. Uh, it's just gorgeous mountains, that mountain range. Uh, I like to see, you know, the Rockies. You know, go out to the Rockies and check that one out. Uh, I heard there's a lot of good riding up in Montana, depending on what time of the year it is. Uh, it's colder than hell up in Montana. Whew. I thought Illinois was bad. My God, no, no, no. There's some uh, northern states up there that put Illinois to shame, man. North Dakota, I heard you're colder than hell up there. It, it, it's like feasing up there. <laughs> Screw that. You know, then you get all the tough guys that say, oh, well, I'll ride all year round. I'll do this and do that. Next thing you know, you see them sitting at a bar. It's like, hey. Where's your bike at? You said you ride all year. Where's it at? <laughs> yeah, usually don't go good over there. <laughs> so, what is your dream ride? I heard Europe. Europe, you have some nice riding over there. Uh, what would it be like if you guys are over there listening to me, which I know you are. Uh, what's it like riding through the Swiss Alps? Oh my goodness, that range of mountains. Ain't it like where Switzerland is like stuck right in the middle of this mountain thing? That's probably why they haven't been attacked. They got mountains all over the place. And it's like, yeah, that's why they neutral. Nobody screw around with them because they don't want to feel like uh, dropping paratroopers in there and be target practice. But a good riding over in Europe and also, uh, you know what? You know, public service announcement here. I am not... A Russian agent for saying this. You know, I know your liberals out there, they always like to scream Russia, Russia, Russia. But I heard that there's a lot of good riding out in Russia. So what I'd like to do is hear from you. Where do you want to go? And what is your yearly goal for wanting to ride your motorcycle? How many miles do you want to put it on? And for those that always say, well, you know, you ain't a biker if you do this, this, and that. Okay. How many miles do you think people should put on their motorcycle to be considered a biker? Because, you know, I have to touch on them people, too. Because you got people that say, oh, you got to put 30,000 miles on your motorcycle. You got to ride it every damn where you go. Same people that, again, you go to the bar and say, hey, where's your motorcycle? <laughs> do as I say, don't do as I do. Is that the old saying with some of these people? Uh, Washington State, I heard there's some good stuff in Washington State. Uh, also on the program today, uh, Kawasaki. Oh, baby. They going after Harley Davidson 750, man. They put something out specifically to compete against the 750. Now, one thing I don't understand is you don't see a lot of promotion for Harley Davidson 750. What is going on? Haven't we talked about this before? Harley-Davidson, everybody says, well, they got 50% of the U.S. market. 
the one thing you guys always fail to mention is it's only the big bike market. And the big bike market ain't the overall biggest market in the United States. It's 1,200cc and under. And Harley-Davidson does not own that sector of CC uh, sales, let me tell you. So, them knowing this, why the hell in the rewire plan are they pushing the CVO? And uh, also, they're you know what, they got totally rid of, uh, supposedly, until 2022 or something, uh, the focus on the Pan American, but they got a, rid of the, the, the Bronx Street Fighter, man. And that was a decent-looking bike. And I know it appealed to the younger generation like Buell did or the V-Rod. It seems any time Harley-Davidson <laughs> gets something that it get more riders, they kick themselves in the balls and get rid of it. You know, now, granted, they're, you know, they claim to be focusing on the Pan American. Now, off-road right now is huge, huge. You know, personally, I like the African Twin. I think it's probably better developed, better tested, because uh, they got them things running around in the deserts of freaking the Middle East, uh, Africa, the whole nine yards. So it's got some testing time in it. And Harley-Davidson's... It, it, looks pretty decent you know i'll try to test ride one once they come out and uh the african twin i, I really like that one so they're they're claiming to be focusing on the off-road market they need to start focusing on that 750 market why in the hell are you saying let's go to the cvo brand and then neglect everything else that really can help you now i you know i already know i always get these people well you're not a ceo of the company well i might be a little better because this dude's a shoe salesman man he's al bundy over here that's running this company now and he is not an american not cool have an American company have a dude from Europe or something that sh uh, sells shoes like Al Bundy. That is his new nickname, CEO Al Bundy of the Harley-Davidson Motor Company. He says they want to reduce inventory in their dealerships. That way it raises prices on the used market. I don't believe that's going to happen. I really don't. It might affect your dealership sales, but crap, you don't go on Marketplace right now on Facebook, or you can go on Craigslist and find a freaking Harley for next to nothing anymore. They are not holding their price line. Actually, I'm kind of pissed off about that because the fat boy now is not holding its price tag, and my boulevard's worth more money than the freaking fat boy. It's like everybody's getting rid of freaking Harley Davidson to saturate the markets. And the prices are just dropping down. It could be because of that, or it could be that, hey, you know, Harley-Davidson's just lost its lore. And again, I know I'm always beating up on Harley-Davidson. I try not to, but I'm just trying to put facts out there about what they are doing as a company. And I think it's really important because if we love the company, you have to make sure you hold its feet to the fire so it does better. That's what any good investor would do, even though I don't invest in that company. No way, baby. Uh -uh, not me. I won't do that. I'm not stupid. Uh, because, quite frankly, they want to, and they came out and said, we want to be the Ferrari of motorcycles. Okay, so you're only going to a segment of the population that can afford that, right? And uh, from a biker standpoint, I really don't consider Harley a Ferrari. Uh, you know, if you're talking long distance riding, long distance now, where you want comfort of a Ferrari and the speed, then you're looking at a Honda Going. I'm sorry to say that. Uh, how many of you guys on your dream trip say you're going to put in 10,000 miles like this guy wants to in the upcoming story would you rather do it on say a bagger or would you rather do it on a gold wing be honest man don't flex your muscles be honest for the comfort of the ride that's not going to beat you all up 
which one do you think is better to take on a long distance ride? One that, say, you're going to do an iron butt challenge the first day of your big ride. So you got 1,100 miles to go. Are you going to ride that bagger or are you going to ride that freaking gold wing in comfort? Now, if you're honest with yourself and no specs of uh, Honda gold wings, you're going to know you want to jump that ass on that gold wing instead of going on that Harley. Uh, you know what? I, I got to admit with me, I ride the boulevard for long distance stuff because I just love how smooth it is, how the ride is compared to uh, you know the fat boy now you know i have to admit i did take off the 18 inch a pangers and went down to regular size you know what that guy made my freaking not only did he screw up the clutch cable problem but he freaking made my bike look like the terminator man it was like oh whatever got the windshield on it is what it is you know it rides a lot better you know my arms ain't killing me and stuff but i'm still not going to take that on an iron butt challenge or a big ride because I love the boulevard, it's a lot more smooth on my ass. So, you know, what do you guys think of what Harley Davidson's trying to push here? You know, with Kawasaki targeting the 750, you know it's only a matter of time before specific bikes come out from Suzuki and Honda, even though, even though they already own that market. You know, I was actually talking to the guy the other day, and he asked me, well, you know, what bike do you uh, wish you could, uh, you know, kept and stuff, or wish you still had? And I was like, man, my 2002 uh, Honda Shadow, man, the American Classic one. I really loved that bike and how it rode. Uh, I think I'm going to get another one, you know, for a third backup. You know, I collect motorcycles sometimes. Uh, but that'd be a nice piece to put in the garage for, you know, short roundabout uh, rides and stuff. I also want that African twin. I can't wait to freaking get a time to where I can go out and freaking just test ride that baby. Uh, so, but, you know, it's a different freaking uh, deal. You know, different type of bikes that you would want to take on these long rides. And, you know, with this contest coming up, I think it was a good question and uh, a good thing to talk about this type of stuff uh, because comfort is really a part of that long ride. You know, you don't want to be tired or wore out or bashed up on a long ass ride. You know, the safety at that point becomes an issue. You don't want to be laid up on the side of the road because you were too damn tired or too damn beat up to do your ride. So, the comfort aspect comes in. Let me know, guys. Let me know. I may be wrong, and you know what? I have been known to be wrong. Most of the time, I have to say to everybody, when I'm just giving a personal opinion. I ain't over here freaking thinking I'm gospel here, man. I might be wrong 75, 80% of the damn time. At least I can admit it. But let's have an intellectual conversation about this without all the Harley cheerleaders coming on and say blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's the challenge to you guys then. Give me facts. Give me specs. Give me reasons why to back your position instead of being schmucks. No more schluck stuff, man. Get on the platform and make your case. That's how, you know... Smart people do it. Intelligent people uh, debate, uh, but I, you know what? I you know I know we get some slow people on the show. I'm not gonna freaking say we don't. So with that, let's go into the uh, news for today. And uh, I'm gonna take a little freaking uh, buzz buzz here, man. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Okay, here we go. WTTW, five Chicago restaurants, club shut down for violating COVID-19 restrictions. And yes, they went after the Dirty Dozen Motorcycle Club for this. 
uh, Chicago can burn to hell, but God forbid businesses try to make some money. God forbid. You know, on the Hollywood and China Dow uh, evening show, uh, again, got to plug it, man. It's going on over on Spotify and all the majors. And we discuss all kinds of issues on that show. And one of them that we discussed it on episode one was this COVID-19 stuff. I can't believe it. You know, see, a motorcycle club's a little different. Yeah, you know, they uh, raise money for the clubhouse. You know, they have, uh, you know, little parties going on. But what I can't understand is how the hell the city of Chicago got info on this. Now, if you're in Chicago, you know things work pretty damn slowly here. So... How fast this happened is beyond me, unless somebody that was actually at the establishment ratted. And you know how I feel about rats. Anyway, city officials shut down five restaurants and clubs for violating rules designed to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Now, let's get on the subject of corona. We had that SARS thing break out. And this country wasn't shut down at all. Now, SARS, you know, was just as free and worse. But the media didn't hammer on it as they are the coronavirus. Man, you know what? I feel sorry for corona. I really do the beer because I love, you know, I used to drink and I used to drink corona. Man, they must be uh, facing some backlash right now. Because you do got a lot of idiots that think that if you drink Corona, it's going to hurt you. It's those same type of idiots that drank that fish cleaner stuff because it had uh, hydro in it or whatever the hell it was. And yeah, they actually drunk it. Stupid people nowadays. Anyway, they shut down a JL lounge on Cicero Ave. Now... Cicero Avenue, if you ever want to get you a $20 Hummer, you go to Cicero Avenue in Chicago. Now, I'm not saying they are the best looking uh, women, actually a bunch of crackheads, but, uh, you know, for those that are homely and, you know, can't get any, if you're in Chicago, go right down Cicero Avenue, right off of North Avenue, you'll get some. $20, a $20 holla. Uh, they were issued two citations for operating after midnight, social distancing violations, and no face coverings. Also, Grata Restaurant was shut down. Uh, you know what's funny with these uh, the freaking hypocrisy of these politicians? It just came out today in San Francisco, they're all shut down, can't do this, can't do that in the hair salons, next thing you know, that freaking, dude, she's an ugly drunk, Pelosi, snuck in there, got her hair done, you believe that? Anyway, uh, the Dirty Dozen Motorcycle Club, 720 through uh, 22 East 67th Street, was shut down by officials and received two citations for social distancing violations and no face coverings. Now, this is on the south side of Chicago, and, uh, you know, I'm kind of having a hard time, uh, you know, with this one. It's like, what the hell's going on? That was the south side of Chicago. You guys don't care about the riding there. You don't care about all the shootings every damn weekend. But you go into a motorcycle clubhouse and say you got to shut down. Uh, that just don't make any freaking uh, sense to me. Now, they're claiming city inspectors conducted 93 investigations, issued 14 citations to seven businesses for violating the city's rules. You got to remember, you're under communist regime here in Chicago. So you got to do what they say, even though it don't pertain to them. That's what I never got. You guys still uh, freaking vote for them. Uh, eight of those investigations were of large gatherings and parties at residential locations. Uh, city officials declined to name the business that were cited but not shut down. Each citation comes with, guess what? A $10,000 fine. $10,000. Can we say gangster right there? 
Not only do I feel sorry for the businesses, how's a motorcycle club going to pay that? A $10,000 fine. Each citation. And the Dirty Dozen Motorcycle Club received two. 20000 The shuttered businesses were re uh, allowed to reopen the next day with proper precautions in place. I say shoot a city like hell, Dirty Dozen. Bars, taverns, breweries, and other establishments that don't have a retail food license permitting them to serve food were blocked on July 24th from serving customers indoors as Mayor Lori the Beetlejuice dude that broad is disgusting. No wonder she's freaking a lesbian. She can only get a butch to like her, dude. She is ugly. Look her up. And health officials work to stamp out an increasing number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the city. Uh, on an average, 348 Chicagoans have been diagnosed each day with corona. And you know what? You got to look at that numbers. 348 each day out of a population of about 6 million. Somebody think uh, somebody's overreacting here? But anyway, yeah, they got uh, two uh, citations, the Dirty Dozen Motorcycle Club. Now, let's go to Motorcycle Club Holds Ride to Give Back, baby. Good stuff. Good stuff here. Uh, let's get on here. Honey Civic Group hope an event planned this weekend will help them give back to their community and give them some two-wheel time. The Jacksonville Kiwanis Club is holding its inaugural motorcycle ride this Saturday. The event was originally scheduled for May, but of course, COVID-19 restrictions forced a postponement. The ride starts at 10 in the morning and will begin and end at New River Harley-Davidson. Organizers say it's $25 per rider with passengers an extra $5. All the proceeds going to support local organizations like the Boys and Girls Club. You know what? I was actually looking at that dealership, how nice it is. And it just reminded me that there's a big dealership out in St. Charles. We actually uh, covered uh, the King's, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Battle of the King's uh, motorcycle building that Harley Davidson holds. And he put a lot of freaking money into that dealership. And like I was talking about earlier, how they want to reduce inventory for the dealers. How is the dealers actually feel about this? Because it's like, damn, man, you put all that money into that, and the sales are freaking uh, dragging, and you're just going, you know what? Matt Laidlaw, if you're listening, do a podcast on this. Because he actually did, a, he, he started a little podcast and he was talking about actually the pricing and the economics behind the pricing where they claim well, it's price perfect and stuff. Go over and check that episode off. But I'd like to hear about uh, this right here. Uh, so let's go on to the next one. And this is the one where I was talking about a Fall River res resident with friends from Townen and uh, Ohio tackles 10,000 mile Okie Hay motorcycle challenge. Hell yeah, baby. Linda Murphy. Imagine setting off for a 10,000 mile motorcycle road trip with a numbered list of bare bone turn by turn directions. GPS isn't allowed and major highways are off limits. Love it. I love it. Nothing but back roads. No GPS. Yes, kids, before GPS, there was something called apps. And you had to use your brain pan to figure out where you were going. Hotels are also off limits. I love it. Old school, baby. Put a freaking tarp on the freaking bike, sleep on the road. Uh, so that means catching a few hours of sleep, camping, roadside. That's what Fall River resident Jonathan Santos faced when he took part in the Hoka Hey motorcycle challenge with his friends Everett Helpton of Towden and Aaron Darth from Ohio. The Hoka Hey takes place every two years starting at a different place in the country. This year it started and ended in Panama City, Florida. And he quote, I covered four or 10,476 miles in 12 days, two hours and 20 minutes. 
You know, that kind of gives me an idea. Next year, we should all plan, all the subscribers plan, like maybe meet in the middle of the country, come together and do an, an insane throttle friggin' ride, man. You know what? I really need to uh, put something like that together. I think it'd be a hell of a time. Love to get all the subscribers together and ride a little bit. That would be fun. Uh, describing it as an endurance challenge, Santu said... Participants had 14 days to complete it to be considered an elite finisher. Those who completed after 14 days are considered finishers, and after 20 days, they are considered participants. Starting off, he said they uh, there were 139 motorcycles. Santo started in the 65 uh, position and ended 23rd. Rock and roll, man. That's good right there which is even more outstanding considering it was his first time around with the Hokey Hey. I love that. Hokey Hey. To enter, you have to fill out an application with writing uh, references and pass an interview. For his references, Santos used, among others, membership in the Iron Butt Association, which has timed rides such as a 1,500 miles in less than 24 hours and coast to coast. Again, be honest, be honest, would you rather take a bagger or a gold wing on one of these rides? Uh, the Hokey Hay Challenge, he said, is, quote, the one for long-distance riders. Hey, Dominic, did you ever compete in this one? Let me know. For the past uh, five or six years, it's been on his must-to list. Santo says he's been on motorcycles since he was about five or six. Quote, I just finally got around to being able to do it. I've always had motorcycles. There have been a couple winters where I've had a motorcycle but no cars. I ride year-round. I don't put it away. Rock and roll, uh, he did it on a 2020 Harley-Davidson Road Glide. Uh, the top 20 get a Hokey Hay belt buckle, and the first-place rider is awarded a Deer Antler Trophy that their names get added to, and then in two years, it's passed on to the next first place finisher. I love it, man. <laughs> uh, this ride, this challenge is based on the Lakota uh, Sioux principle of uh, Wolokoka, <laughs> and the event celebrates all that is pure and powerful in the warrior spirit. Rock and roll, man. Rock and roll. Good story. Uh the OaklandPress.com retrial date set for a man charged with fatal shooting at Pontiac Motorcycle Club. We've covered this one in the past. Uh, the trial date is set for October 12th for a Pontiac man charged with a murder that happened in the bathroom of a motorcycle club. Gregory Kincaid, 43, is charged in the fatal shooting of Mecca Shea uh, Ramsey at the Knight Riders Motorcycle Club in Pontiac, Ramsey suffered 12 bullet wounds and died at the scene. Yeah, I think he overdid it just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, Kincaid's trial had uh, gotten underway in February, but a mistrial was declared uh, three days later due to a medical condition reportedly suffered by his attorney. Not good right there. Let's go overseas where they always act a fool. Uh, please shut down Townsville OMCG event. Uh, they disrupted an event in Townsville linked with the Odin's Warriors Outlaw Motorcycle Gang following the execution of a search warrant. On Saturday, August 29th, officers from Tax Force Maxima with assistance from the Townsville Major Organized Crime Squad and Tactical Crime Squad executed a search warrant on Leland Street address. During the search, police identified and seized items including OMCG paraphernalia and quantities of cannabis and amphetamines. So basically they took their uh, member merchandise and their support mer merchandise. They call it uh, paraphernalia. Officers executed the search after receiving information the Townsville chapter of the Olden Warriors were planning to hold an event at the address resulted in the seizure of items including event tickets and payments 
an entertainment system, and alcohol. Oh, somebody's a rat. Somebody's a snitch. Liar, liars, pants on fires. Uh, quote, police will be alleging the Townsville Odin's Warrior chapter was operating a clubhouse at the premises and will be continuing investigations to have the premise declared a restricted premise. Detective agent uh, Craig McGrath of the Organized Crime Gangs Group said, I really feel for you guys over there. Uh, these cops have dicta they're dictators over there. My God. Anyway... Uh, motorcyclists rev their engines in support of local law enforcement. This from NWI.com. A uh, month ago, Pete Dravovich wasn't sure he'd hear the hum of motorcycles revving up near the square to honor hometown heroes. However, 119 motorcyclists lined up behind local law enforcement agencies before heading downtown Crown Point on Sunday. Underneath a bright sun and blue sky, a contrast to last year's rainy weather, 160 riders turned out for the annual Hometown Heroes Motorcycle Charity Run. Uh, that's a good freaking, uh, that's a good freaking showing. Uh, what they did, we're happy what we saw today. Everybody had goosebumps. All the cops showed up, and it was a fantastic event. Uh, he grew up in a law enforcement family, founded, and has organized the event for six years. Uh, they were uh, debating on just canceling the event because of COVID, but they went forward. Now, this is what I was talking about. This is what I this was what I was talking about. Kawasaki, and this is a good looking freaking bike here, baby. Launches BS6 Vulcan S to complete with Harley Davidson Street 750. Uh, the new Kawasaki Vulcan S comes with design and features similar to the previous variant, but now gets the BS6 engine and also a new paint scheme. You know, I got to admit, yeah, the V-Twin is uh, a trademark and it's, uh, you know, history with Harley Davidson goes all the way back to the beginning. But don't you guys think it's time maybe to redesign the damn engines, you know, something without the V-Twin uh, maybe that'll help get some more people in there, but you know, the competition, that's a beautiful day. Like, uh, Kawasaki has unveiled a BS six compliant version of the Vulcan S, which competes against other entry level cruisers from a premium brand, Harley Davidson street 750, which also received a BS six update. The new Kawasaki Vulcan S comes with design and features similar to the previous variant. The Falcon S is priced at, uh, I ain't going to give you the price because I can't even read that damn crap. It, it's actually in something other than freaking uh, dollar signs. Uh, anyway, uh, the company has decided to charge a premium for the new BS6 uh, compliant engine. In comparison, the Street 750 by Harley Davidson is much cheaper. Wow. Wow. Harley's actually uh, cheaper. Uh, the Vulcan S gets a liquid cool 8 valve 649 cc parallel twin. It has fuel injection. The engine puts out a torque of about 62.4 and a power of 61. Uh, the engine is uh, mated to a six speed gearbox. Rock on. So Suzuki go or uh, Kawasaki going after him with that Vulcan S, baby. Uh, let's go to Corey Graf's Wall of Shame. Everybody's. Favorite segment of the show. <laughs> JSO officer arrested face criminal sexual misconduct charges with victim under 13. Here we go again. Big news tonight that we are following out of Jacksonville. An officer with Sick the Jacksonville puppy. Sheriff's Office has been arrested tonight. Officer David Geddard is facing two counts of criminal sexual misconduct with a victim less than 13 years old. According to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, this alleged incident happened about six years ago in Kalamazoo, Michigan. The officer has been fired from the Sheriff's Office and is expected to face the charges in court tomorrow. You sick ass puppy. You know, it's bad enough that you have a bunch of comos that are not cops. Cops are supposed to protect kids and then you get them with this. Under 13, what is with you people? Somebody castrate them. Go medieval on them. Oh. 
Uh, this out of BET, a San Antonio police uh, mistakenly arrest and jail a black man. Not good to do in these times. Not good. San Antonio man found himself in police custody for no reason when police arrested him under false pretenses. Not good. Matthias Ometti was out for an afternoon jog on the city's north side when he was confronted by two police officers who believed he was the suspect they were looking for. But the confrontation ended with the 33-year-old who's in an insurance adjuster being accused of assaulting the officers and being arrested and held in jail for two days. He was assigned a court-appointed defense attorney who died nine years ago. However, the arrest turned out to be a case of mistaken identity. The two officers were called to around 2 p.m. on Tuesday, according to the San Antonio Express. They stopped him because he matched the description of a man suspected of choking and punching a woman at a nearby apartment complex. Officials claim they repeatedly asked him for his name, which he declined to give them. Now that's just going to uh, get the situation uh, to go a little to the south. I always say name, birth date, and give me my lawyer. Uh, a person being detained or questioned by police is not required to provide an identification according to the Texas Penal Code. They are, however, required to follow commands while being detained. Uh, it states that he was detained because he was aggressive and allegedly refused to get into the back of a squad car. Uh, bystander video shows the officer spent nearly two minutes wrestling him into the car and he was heard screaming, you're choking me, you're choking me, you're choking me. I think that I'd be pissed off too, especially when you didn't do nothing. Uh, the victim of the family violence incident later arrived at the scene and told police that he was not the man who assaulted her. Officers then uh, took him to municipal court for identification purposes. It was there they identified and arrested him on two felony counts of assaulting a police officer. So they get it wrong and they're still charging him with felonies. I. Uh, wonder why these freaking people don't like cops. Oh my god, man, what is wrong with you? This is Carrie here from Beggar Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari, host of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Check me out over on Instagram at Insane Throttle Biker News and join in on the discussion over on our YouTube channel at Insane Throttle Biker News Radio Show. All right, man, welcome back to the show. My final thoughts is coming up right now. Man, it's tough being a motorcycle club these days. It's like Australia and freaking the United States. What are you on the same page? What are you copying off each other? You know, they go over there in Australia. They bust down a club and they call them an OMG. They are really using these freaking laws over there like dictators, like dictators. You, you always give the Leo a little bit of power. And they take it and take it and take it a freaking mile. No wonder people are upset with Leo. No wonder. And me, you know, yeah, some of the incidences like Floyd and this other freaking uh, schmuck who's a freaking sex offender. Uh, I have to put that in there, man. Have to put that in. It's actually funny. After... Uh, China Down on Me did that first episode. We were getting all kinds of feedback through the email. And, you know, of course, you know, your racist came up and that he didn't deserve that. You know what? I think anybody who's a sexual offender deserves medieval treatment. I don't care how it's done. It just needs to be done. Because if you go after kids, <laughs> you deserve everything you get. Uh, I don't care if it's by them or uh, law for whatever. You get you get medieval treatment. That's just the way I feel. Uh, but Australia with them uh, consorting laws. Hasn't that ever been overturned yet in court? Again, I don't follow it that much over there. I just see what I see over here in the media. Uh, but I cannot imagine any country that's uh, free and fair 
society can actually push them kind of laws on. I do remember a, a situation where a court ruled against it, but I think it was New Zealand because you guys know those are two separate countries. I'm reminded about that all the damn time. Uh, again, I might be wrong, but somebody said only 0.1% or something like that of crime is done by bikies over there, and it's bikies, not bikers, uh, I love bikers, that's what they're called, uh, do the crime. So I don't understand why all these task force, the Raptor, Maxima, all that stuff, wasn't Maxima something from the uh, old Roman Legion? I don't know, you know I gotta look that stuff up, uh, but... They just abuse everything. And what's really funny is the city of Chicago. This was on, what was 67th Street for uh, the Dirty Dozen? That's the south side. Usually, and it's a sad state of affairs that they do this. They leave the south side stuff alone. Because, quite frankly, it's a war zone out there. It's zombie land, as I call it. I remember going on, what was it, 71st and Yates. My God, you know, I did a tattoo thing down there, uh, you know, because I, I, I'm a little rebellious. You know, I don't believe in these stupid laws that Illinois passed, even though I had to follow them when I owned uh, a tattoo shop. But I did uh, some parties and stuff. Went down on 71st and Yates. It was like I had my freaking uh, shotgun. I had a Mossberg with me. Uh, but right under all my tattoo stuff, I had me uh, a 357 snub nose in my freaking waistband. But it was zombie land down there. It was like literally zombies walking around, man, because they pushing that needle. Uh, but I'm just surprised they, they went in and freaking harassed this club. And if it holds true that they got two citations issued, that's closing that clubhouse down. So hopefully they were smart enough to organize the club where, okay, you know, we got busted here, uh, but you're able to move right down the street because, what, a clubhouse only costs like three, 400 bucks in that area of town. Uh, it's not the most sought-after property on the south side of Chicago. Uh, is it, again, I'm not trying to be racist because you guys are going to come back and say I'm racist. I'm just saying it. You know, look it up, man. The crime did This sucks on the south side of Chicago. West side, too. So, yeah, I'm real surprised that they went after those guys. Uh, but, again, it, you know, it, you'd think they freaking Strike Force Raptor was in Chicago doing that kind of stuff. Uh, because, hey, they, won't, they weren't following social distancing. They didn't have this and that. And it begs the question... Why the hell didn't this happen during the SARS event? That was Obama-Biden, by the way. You know Biden, dude. He was trying to friggin' hold the conference. Dude, he was, dude, the guy's an empty vessel. You guys are freaking nuts if you're going to vote for them two friggin' Dean Bats. Biden-Harris, you know, the one was smoking weed while she was locking everybody up. And dude, uh, for 47 years, hasn't done nothing. And yes, I'm plugging, baby. I'm plugging. You don't like it? Go uh, beat off in the back corner or something. Pull that pecker a little bit. You know, get uh, off alone. Maybe you'll get a little uh, happier. I don't know. Because you guys are grumpy, you anti ones, man. You anti Trump guys, real freaking grumpy people. Uh, but. Like I talked on the show with China Dow, this thing's probably going to be over November 3rd or 4th this, if they win. Oh, you don't need it anymore. Don't need it. But in the meantime, every damn business in this country suffered. Closing down. Sad state of affairs. Now with the Kawasaki, that was, it had to be... The most interesting freaking piece that I did today, and everybody knows I personally like talking about the motorcycles and stuff, uh, but Harley-Davidson, man, what is with you guys? Your 750 is where you need to be in this country. Yes, I get it. Your whole image is made on the big bike market, but if you're going to freaking go and compete... CEO Al Bundy needs to know the markets over here. He needs to. 
Yeah, shoe salesman. I cannot believe that they got a shoe salesman in charge of Harley freaking Davidson. You know, he's already cutting everything down uh, to the bare minimum. Sick. He's just sick. <laughs> uh, and the other favorite story had to be that 10,000-mile uh, uh, ride. What do you guys think? Should Insane Throttle get together with all our subscribers, go out, party, have one of them freaking weekends, and just ride, man? We got to do it old school, though. Nice long ride. You're only allowed tarps and a sleeping bag rack. And the tarp is because, you know, we're going to string it over to motorcycles just like it used to be. Uh, I remember coming up. That was one of my favorite things to do. We would get a freaking sore ass, pull over on the side of the road, throw our tarps on, start a little campfire, and just have a fun time. Now, what kind of ride would that be, huh? That would freaking be awesome if you ask me. I think it's awesome a long rider doing this contest. And the reason why long rider I put where you have to show receipts is because you want to know that they're actually doing it right. You know, we don't need no cheaters. No cheaters. Uh-uh. You know, this is something that long rider came up with. And again, he, you know, he recognizes, I recognize that there's a lot of bad stuff that uh, we cover in the biker scene. And it's time to do some good stuff, have some uh, fun times, uh, and cover good stuff. That's why you see a lot of the news that I'm doing. You'll see a lot of charity stuff. Because I got to plug that in there. Because I took a step back looking at the show. And I was like, man, a lot of people are right, man. All we're doing is cover the bad. You know, we have to put some good in there. So that's why I took that step. Also, yeah, you see me covering some of these rides for the Leo stuff is because I want to start appealing to all bikers, not just, you know, the clubs, but all bikers, independents. Yes, I'm still covering clubs. I'm still covering motorcycle profiling when it happens. But there's so much more, so much more. And I might lose some of my core people because, you know, I'm covering different type of stuffs. And they're like, well, you know, Hollywood, you say you're against Leo, which I am, which I am. But that don't mean my personal opinions, ha you know, I still should give them. But at the same time, there's others in the biking community that want to hear that type of stuff. So if we're to uh, grow bigger than we are on Spotify and iTunes, I keep on calling it iTunes, but it's Apple Podcasts now. Uh, that's the type of stuff we got to do. Because after all, you got to stick with your wheelhouses and you got to diversify on them wheelhouses because it's funny. If I actually pulled up the numbers, because I get a lot of haters and this is funny. If I pulled up my numbers, showed them on the screenshot, you'd be, oh, okay, that's why he does radio. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, you know, they're decent. You know, uh, a lot of people don't like watching radio shows on YouTube and uh, Facebook. They want to see, uh, you know, moto vlogs and all that stuff. And, yeah, I'm doing a little bit of it. Uh, I did one the other day. Uh, I What it was it named? Uh, Hollywood's... Uh, take on bikers and MC clubs are way off base, dead wrong, something like that. I also put it on Instagram TV, which again, go over there and join us on Instagram. I think you like it. I'm trying to do a different stuff as far as video over there. And yes, if it was, uh, you know, another year with no COVID and stuff, I already planned on attending rallies and that's what was going to go on the YouTube channel and stuff. But there's really a core base that listens into our videos, watches uh, our videos of the actual radio show. And I know some people are like, man, you know, you, you, it's long. Well, it's a radio show, guys. <laughs> you know, we aim for at least 50 minutes to, I don't know, I'd have to say an hour uh, of a radio show. Because a lot of people, they listen to this on 
the you know their personal stereos they listen to us at work they plug us into the speakers and you know we help them get through the work day or the long drive that's just like the titles of the show whatever the title is that's what's being covered within the show it has nothing to do with uh you know gangland or the history channel no we don't show that because it's a radio show anyway don't forget to go over those platforms uh 7 p.m eastern standard time actually that's going to be the first one over there because the episode we ever already did i let it loose uh this morning so you will have the hollywood and china doll uh, evening show listen in on that Again, that's only available on the podcast platforms. It's not going to be available on YouTube or uh, iTunes or uh, Facebook. My problem. So with that, I'll talk to you guys later. You have a good one, guys. Rock and roll. Rock on. Go get you some 420, baby, and a nice honey. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community, motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done on Motorcycle Madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms. Check out your daily biker news. Rock on. Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel top of the notch all the baggers bikers and brotherhood and ladies don't you worry we didn't forget about you check it out at beggars syndicate cycles.com yo show is now available on spotify and all major platforms including ir radio itunes stitcher and more don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!